Hi there! In today's video, we're going to talk about how to make a three-fold brochure design in Adobe InDesign. So let's get started. So from the Create a New Document window, I'm going to go to the Print tab and change the units to Inches and Orientation to Landscape. And since it's a three-fold brochure, it should have two sides, hence we'll need two pages here. And I don't want the Facing Pages option, so I'm going to uncheck it. I'll change the columns to 3 and the column gutter to 0.16 inch. I'm also going to keep my margins to 0.16 inch since I'll be using images and colors that will touch the edges of the pages. I'll keep the bleed to 0.125 inch and hit create. Once in the document, ensure that your ruler is showing. Mine is already here. If yours is not showing, go to view and click on this option here. At this point, it says hide rulers because mine is already active. If it wasn't, it would show show rulers and the shortcut to get it is command R on a Mac or control R on a PC. So first of all, I'm going to make a triangular corner. So for that, let's grab the rectangle tool and holding shift, drag a square and let your starting point be the bleed outside of the document and drag inward to about four inches and release. Now grab the white arrow and select this corner here and hit the delete button or backspace in case of a Mac and uh, you'll get your triangle. We'll change the color a little later so let it stay black for now. Now we need another corner like this for the opposite side of the page so instead of making another one let's just copy this by selecting it and hitting command C on a Mac or control C on a PC and paste it using command V on a Mac or control V on a PC. Now you can see the rotate option on top. You've got to click on it a few times to get it to fit perfectly to the opposite side of the page and then place it perfectly. For the area in the middle, we'll use the pen tool. So grab the pen tool and your starting point should again be the bleed and make a polygon covering the entire document and leaving some space between the two triangles we made. Now, I don't want to add any color to these shapes here. I want them to match the colors of our images that we will use here. So let's first place an image just to steal colors from it. So let's go to File and then Place and locate the image from the computer. Okay, now we have the image here, so let's grab the eyedropper tool and you see how InDesign gives you multiple options of different uh, colors the image has. So I'm going to click on this yellow to sample it and then click on the corner to drop that color here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other triangle as well because I want both the triangles to have the same color. So select the triangle, grab the eyedropper tool, then sample the color from the palette or from the other yellow triangle and click once on this triangle to drop the color. Similarly, for the polygon, select it first and using the eyedropper, I'm going to sample this gray from the palette and drop it onto the polygon. Perfect. Now let's select the ellipse frame tool and holding the shift drag to make a big circle covering two columns as illustrated and center align it to the two columns on the left. Now I'm going to select the rectangle frame tool and make a rectangle in the third column on the right. Now let's add our images. So go to file and place and locate the image to place it here. Let me tell you here that I have set my fitting option to content aware fit. And that's the reason why all my images automatically fit perfectly to the frames. So let's select the circular frame and go to file and place and locate the image from the computer for this one as well. Now grab the text tool and from the margin on the left, drag to cover the two columns and before releasing the mouse, Press the right arrow key and you'll find that the text box is now divided into two columns. 
to link both of the columns, click on this small button on the bottom and then click once in the second column and now they are linked. So double click on the first column to start typing and type in heading. And then press return twice to go to another paragraph. And now right click and select the fill with placeholder text option and the text will beautifully flow to the second column as well. Next, select the text and change the color of the text to white from the toolbar above and also change the font to Futura. For the heading, I think I'll pick Roboto Black and increase the point size to 24 points. For the text on the right, we'll have to use a trick because you see it has a white gap between yellow and gray panels and uh, whether we use black text or white it won't really look good so let's grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle and from the opacity option on top reduce it to somewhere between 40 and 50 percent And now grab the text tool and make a text box and right click to fill it with the placeholder text. And much like earlier, change the text color to white and font to Futura. For this area on top, since we're doing this tutorial, we don't really have a logo. So let's just type in logo and put it there. So ideally, if you're designing something like this, you could place your logo there or information like book now or call and then add the phone number. So there are various information that it can hold. It does not necessarily have to be a logo. Now let's move on to our page two because page one is almost ready. So page one was basically the inside of the fold as we're designing a three-fold brochure and uh, page two is going to be the outside of the fold. Hence the extreme right column on page two should be the first page that the clients would see and would have the logo and address and contact details as well or an image or images. And since we already have some basic colors which we put on the front page of the brochure, the second page should also follow the same color scheme. So holding command on a Mac or control on a PC, let's click on the yellow triangles and the gray polygon and copy them by hitting command C on a Mac or control C on a PC and then paste them onto page two by hitting command V on a Mac or control V on a PC. Now let's grab the rectangle frame tool and drag it in here for the image of the first page of the threefold brochure and then go to file in place and locate the image from the computer to place it here. And much like we did on page one, let's grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle here and reduce its opacity to reveal the design behind it. And I think we'll have to drag this rectangle to the bleed zone as it will be sliced off eventually. Perhaps we made this mistake on page one as well, so let's correct it now. Let's grab the rectangle and drag it to touch the bleed as it will be sliced off, like I said, but ensure that the text stays within the margins. So this panel will hold the company's name, the address and the contact details. So let me type in these details here and increase the font size of the company's name, like in, in usual cases. And another thing that will come here before the company's name is the logo of the company. So let's type in logo. And let's also center align both of them. Since this is a demo, we don't really have uh, exact information. So I'm just using the placeholder text for, for most of the things here. Let's drag another rectangle frame and place it on top of the middle panel here. This is gonna be the back of the brochure once it is folded and it will hold the location map. So let me go to file in place and locate the map to place it here. Please note that since it's a map, we wouldn't really want to have some of its sections sliced off. So let's keep it within the margins. Let's not drag it all the way to the bleed. Let's also add some text to the bottom using the text tool and change the font color to white and font to Roboto. For the last panel on the left, we'll add an ellipse frame and uh, add an image by going to file and place. 
and locate the image from the computer and place it here. Also, let's add some text for this panel as well. I think both these panels look very busy and mostly brochures don't really have so much of text. So let's delete some text and divide these two panels into paragraphs. Now they're looking much better. Now let's add a drop shadow to our circular images here. So select the image and right click and go to effects and then drop shadow and make your adjustments of the size and X and Y offset as per your choice before hitting OK. Similarly, go to the circular image on page one and go to drop shadow and make your necessary adjustments before hitting OK. Now let's export the pages as JPEG to see how they look. So let's go to file and export. Let's name our file test and format should be JPEG and hit save and then export. And let's also double click on our file here. This is how our inside page will look. I think it looks pretty nice. And there are so many variations and so many different possibilities you can use to design it. This tutorial is just to give you an idea of how you can design a threefold brochure, but you don't have to strictly stick to this format. You can throw in your creativity and make it look much better than what it looks now. I hope you understand what I mean. Let's check page two now. Uh oh, I think we made a mistake with the fonts here. They are not of the same size and they are different fonts as well from the ones on page one. Let's select and change the font to Futura because we used Futura in the first one and let's also match the font size and let's export the pages now to check how they look. Much better. You see, I haven't changed the font size and this fonts of the company's name and where we'll put the address, etc. Because they need to be anyway of a different font size and in most likelihood different fonts as well. Alright guys, so that concludes our session today and that's how you design a three-fold brochure in InDesign. I hope you've enjoyed the video and have learned something from it. So please like, share and subscribe to my channel and do share your thoughts in the comments as well. So I'll see you on Wednesday with the next one. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.